Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Intel Core i3-12300. It's the fastest i3 to date and perhaps the quickest quad-core processor currently available. Now I know what some of you are thinking, are 4 cores and 8 threads really enough for gaming these days? Well the short answer is yes. Over the past few days I've been using the 12300 with a basic H610M motherboard and 16 gigs of 3200MHz DDR4 in dual channel, along with a 2080 Super. I'd like to thank Intel who reached out and sent this i3 over to me, that was a very welcome surprise. As always, I won't let that influence my thoughts on this CPU and my first thought is that it may make more sense where you live to opt for the i3-12100 or 12100F instead. It all depends on pricing and availability in your region and in addition you might find that the i5-12400F is only a tad higher in price too. That said, this video is about showcasing the performance of this impressive quad core so let's jump into some tests and put the four Golden Cove performance cores through their paces. For comparison's sake I'm going to be including results from my trusty i5-10400F because I'm simply curious to see how my personal daily CPU holds up against the i3. Plus it gives us some perspective as to where this new quad core fits in. The i5 has been stuck to a basic H410M motherboard over the last 18 months and paired with the same memory, albeit clocked at the maximum supported 2666 MHz. Therefore this is isn't a like for like comparison but both setups are representative of what you might end up with if you were sticking to a tighter budget. It's nice to finally see faster frequency support with LGA 1700 even at the lower end of things. You can of course use DDR5 on more expensive boards as well if you want to. First of all, a quick look at Cinebench R20, the i3-12300 produced a couple of very nice scores, and when I first saw that single core score from an i3, well, I couldn't quite believe it. Moving on to some games, and first up we have the title that I was most concerned with. I wasn't sure how nicely Battlefield 2042 would play with our four cores here, but it turns out that I didn't have much to worry about. The 0.1% low doesn't look great on paper, but there was one specific spot that caused this sudden stutter, which was felt with the i5 test setup as well, so it wasn't an incident exclusive to the i3. Other than that, Battlefield 2042 is more than playable with this chip. The RTX 2080 Super probably isn't the most realistic pairing for a part like this, but it allows the 12300 to flex its muscles a little more, and to be honest, if you wanted to pair a card like this with a lower cost 12th gen part, don't let me stop you. In Cyberpunk 2077, my custom benchmark run consisted of driving from Northside to Fingers Clinic, which takes us into a crowded night city towards the end of the run. Once again, the i3 did very well with the high in-game settings selected across the board. There were no nasty surprises in terms of stutters and dips. Now I did notice the CPU usage creeping up towards the mid 90s percentage wise, but the difference between this i3 and older quad cores is that this rise in percentage isn't accompanied by sudden performance issues. Things stay very solid even as we approach the more packed parts of town. This won't necessarily be the case with previous generation quad core parts, even those that have hyper threading or SMT. These Golden Cove cores really are quite impressive. In Far Cry 6 we saw well over 100 FPS, the gameplay on screen is more for illustrative purposes as I used the built-in benchmark tool, I just thought that regular gameplay was a bit more exciting to look at. Now some people would have you believe that quad cores are dead, and while I do think that buying the best processor you can afford is always the best option, if an i3 is the best processor you can afford, then you shouldn't be concerned because it will do a fantastic job, surprisingly so in fact. I'm actually really tempted to replace my i5 with this just for the sake of seeing how long it can hold up, how quickly will it succumb to the advancements of CPU intensive game engines in comparison to say 6 core chips, will it continue to flourish for years to come? My bet is that this and other 12th gen i3s will continue to be sort of underdogs for quite some time but we'll have to see. Forza Horizon 5 now, and this is of course a very well optimised title. For this benchmark, I ran the in-game tool once again. This is more intensive than just driving around solo or competing in countryside set races, so the figures you see here are probably a bit lower than what you could expect a lot of the time. 
Again, this gameplay is more for illustrative purposes. It's nice to see that even in the more intense races though, the i3 does well. The 1 and 0.1% lows represent solid frame times too. For the final discrete graphics card test, I tried out GTA 5, an older game but one that's still very popular. I opted for the highest settings and turned all the advanced options on too. MSAA was however off as I don't think the performance sacrifice is worth the visual gain but it's all down to personal preference. This is also where I saw the biggest advantage over my older i5 when it came to the average frame rate. Though Far Cry 6 also saw some big differences and the percentile figures really changed in that case. The i3-12300 might not be worth it over the 12100 or 12100F and you might want to look at how much more the i5-12400F costs but again, it's all about pricing and availability where you live. It's great to see this level of performance at a lower cost point, and I can't wait to see some of the budget systems that my fellow tech YouTubers put together using quad-core 12th gen Intel parts. Last but not least, let's take a brief look at the integrated UHD 730 graphics. We've got a base clock of 300 megahertz and a max dynamic frequency of 1450. I wasn't expecting much, hence recording externally at 30 FPS, but GTA 5 for example will actually exceed 60 at 1280 by 720. This means that there is certainly room for adjustment when it comes to the visual quality settings here as well as resolution. Forza Horizon 5 at 720p low also put up a decent fight exceeding 30, sometimes 40 FPS. This was the low preset, not the very low preset, which would mean a few more frames, but the game definitely looks worse for it. Overall, this has been my look at the i3-12300. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed testing it out and I'm still quite surprised at the performance I've seen, but let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.